everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. And for our fourth segment of the day here on the show, we are going to be continuing with our positional rankings with our wide receiver positions this time. Another position, very volatile and versatile this season. But all of these players, right, are either in situations where they have to step up for their teams, and I feel like based off their matchups, they definitely can, or, you know, have just risen the fantasy wide receiver ranks for my, my personal opinion and how I view them at this current moment in time. So without further ado, let's jump right into this segment here because I think it's going to be very interesting and telling for where we are at in terms of the wide receiver landscape in fantasy. Let's start off with a guy who is of the step it up variety, Tyree Kill going up against the Patriots. He had 19.1 fantasy points this week against the Las Vegas Raiders, but I kind of feel like I'm still waiting for him to really continue to be what the Dolphins need him to be as a vocal leader and as a leader on the field, especially for this team, because I feel like this stretch for the Dolphins has been very positive, but in a much different way than we'll think. For example, two weeks ago against the Rams, they focused on the defensive side of the football, getting them the win. But this week, on the offensive side of the football, they focused on guys who really had him getting a lot of opportunities. Devon Achan, for example, looked like much more of himself or last year's self than he has all season long. And Jonu Smith, we talked about, is an interesting weapon to utilize in these last couple of weeks as well. But the reason why I think Tyree Kill is going to do well is because it's not just a matchups thing. It's because it's what he's going to do as the season progresses and as the Dolphins grow more confident. Because this Dolphins team really believes in itself and they're not necessarily in the worst position in the AFC. Everything's in front of them. Yes, they have tough matchups ahead. But I feel like they're at a place where because of Tua's return, anything, any avenue for them is open yet again. So look for Tyreek Hill to prove that in these coming games, especially against an opponent like the Pats, where, you know, they want to finish them off. This is a divisional game still, and they want to finish them off no matter how bad the Pats look. So look for Tyreek Hill, not just in this game, perhaps over the next couple of weeks as well, as the Dolphins try to make that playoff push, really elevate his game for this team. Then let's talk about another Seattle Seahawk here who kind of has taken a little bit of a backseat. His first game back from an injury after the bye against San Fran. 14 points there. DK Metcalf in this game against the Cardinals. A lot of people might say, well, this could be an opportunity for me to mention a guy like JSN really lighting it up from a fantasy perspective. But I think that the reason why I think so highly of not just this game, but DK Metcalf within this game, in the context of this game, is because, not just of the match, but because of the physicality he presents and the way he can open up the rest of the field for the Seahawks. While I'm not going to mention either Ty Lockett or JSN, I'm going to mention that because of what DK Metcalf is going to bring to this game, they also can see their numbers elevate and production elevate as a result. So look for DK Metcalf to be an important receiver in many different ways for Seattle in this game. He's a matchup nightmare. I feel like Geno loves him in certain situations, whether it's third and long or they want to take a shot to the end zone near midfield. They love utilizing DK Metcalf in so many different ways. This is a reliable physical target. And I feel like the Cardinals are going to be hard done by to compensate for them. Because they have to worry about Tyler Lockett savvy as well. JSN's truly been one of the better route runners in the league over the past couple of weeks. Especially considering the fact that, you know, they've needed him to be that guy. Or with DK being absent for quite some time. But this is the game where DK Metcalf proves his worth. The Seattle Seahawks. And, most importantly, to their playoff push as well. Because this is a very pivotal game. The winner... Either, whether it be the Cardinals remains in first place in the NFC West or the Seahawks, they ultimately get elevated into first place. But I still think that DK Metcalf is going to shine in this one, no matter what 
befalls the Seahawks because of the fact that his matchup physicality is just something that's so hard to compensate for for NFL defenses. And the third guy I want to talk about, now we're going to get into two guys who are kind of in that camp of these guys have snuck up on people in fantasy. This guy I really think very highly of, especially this season and what he's been able to do for this Chargers team. And while you know they aren't a pass-first offense anymore with Jim Harbaugh at the helm, this guy has proven that when you know they can develop a passing game and get that going, he really is effective down the field. And that's Quentin Johnson. This is going to be a very exciting matchup. We're going to learn a lot about this Chargers team against the Ravens next Monday night. And I feel like Quentin Johnson is going to be a big part of that because his task is going to be easier than said than either done than said because of that Ravens secondary. I feel like Jim Harbaugh's loving these opportunities to go up against these defenses that do not have good secondaries because, you know, they have good offenses. But, you know, it gives this Chargers offense opportunity to kind of quote-unquote sneak up on people because that's what I feel like would happen to the Cincinnati Bengals. They thought, you know, that the Chargers would run a lot more, but Justin Herbert came out passing. And if he does it again against the Ravens, especially against that very weak secondary, then chances are Quentin Johnston will get a lot of yards really quickly. So I really like this matchup for him. But don't let all these matchups against weaker defenses fool you. I still think that against premier competition, Quentin John is going to be a viable fantasy asset. Because I look at this Chargers team, I feel like, you know, Jim Harbaugh has found the perfect balance for it. This isn't like the Michigan team where he rarely let J.J. McCarthy pass them to victory. This is a team where he knows Justin Herbert is an elite NFL quarterback and trusts him wholeheartedly when he needs him. And so that balance, that trust, is really making this Chargers team special. And once they trust themselves, especially if they even get to the postseason, which we have to see down the stretch, but if they get to the postseason, this team is not going to be a fluke. I initially thought that was going to be the case, but this team is not going to be a fluke. And I feel that it's all down to this offense and its variety. And Quentin Johnson's role in it as well. So I really think very highly of him. And I think in this matchup, he's going to continue to prove his worth for this Chargers team. 12.8 fantasy points for Cincinnati. Definitely not his best game. But I just know that he's in for several more solid fantasy performances this season. And then last but not least, let's talk about a weird situation here for a wide receiver. Because... I didn't necessarily want to mention his stat line, but I thought it was going to be interesting. How about Michael Williams with the Pittsburgh Steelers? When I looked at this matchup and I looked at his stats at the end of the game, I was shocked to see that a healthy Michael Williams had zero fantasy points. And, you know, it was a slog of a game, that game between the Steelers and the Ravens. But, you know, you expect better out of a guy like Michael Williams, who's such a vertical threat down the field, the former Charger. Going up against the Browns, who definitely still feel very prideful in their situation right now. They're playing with a lot of heart. And you would think that the secondary is the best part of this team. I think that Michael Williams is their biggest test. And, you know, it's a comeback to hurt me because, you know, this Pittsburgh offense has not really looked very lively of yet i feel like you know russell wilson can still be effective but that game against the ravens didn't necessarily convince me or impress me that much outside of what they did defensively and you know chris boswell being solid kicking those field goals but mike williams is certainly someone they didn't just bring in to not have immediate effect because he can't and against the browns in a what could be a feisty divisional game and what could project to be a much more difficult game than the Pittsburgh Steelers think, Michael Williams could be the difference maker. And I feel like Russell Wilson, once he gets comfortable with him, will rely on him as someone who brings out the best in himself. And so look for that deep ball connection to hit a couple of times in this game because I think that, you know, the Browns secondary isn't as potent as it was last year. 
It's not a secondary that can generate takeaways. Not a secondary that's as sticky in coverage as last year's. It's still the same players, but they're playing a little bit differently or playing a little bit more tensely. And so that's why I feel like this is an opportunity for Mike Williams to make his stamp with this Pittsburgh Steelers team. So all four of these guys, look out for them this week. Definitely a lot of interesting storylines here. But let me know what you think of the comments for our last segment of the day. A fun one to conclude. Fantasy fact versus fiction. Which bold fantasy claims that I made for this week can be easily justified or just as easily debunked? You definitely don't want to miss this segment to close out the show. So we'll be right back after this short break. 